Let's look at uh, denial of service attacks. We usually abbreviate this uh, capital D, lowercase o, capital S. And uh, we'll talk uh, general terms about what a denial of service attack is, and we'll look more specifically at a, um, a type of denial of service attack called a sin flood. Denial of service attack is any act that causes a system to be unusable by its real users. Uh, these can take numerous forms. They're very common, can be costly. Major types, um, sin flood or smurf attack, we'll look at both of these. Um, but they remember about a DOS uh, denial of service attack it, uh, is that it does take numerous forms. Uh, as a matter of fact, we often make uh, uh, little jokes about this. Uh, you know, there's various things you can do and basically DOS yourself uh, from your system. Uh, for example, you know, uh, one thing you could do if you spilled your your coffee into your keyboard, <laughs> you've, you've effectively DOS yourself from the system until you get another keyboard. So there's a number of things that qualify as a denial of service attack. Now let's look at more specifically one uh, called a sin flood. Um, the sin flood exploits the TCP three-way handshake and uh, hopefully you're familiar with this. Um, the process whereby a TCP connection is uh, established. Uh, there are three parts to this. Uh, the first is uh, a synchronized packet is sent by the initiating machine. Then the second part is the receiving machine sends back a um, an acknowledgement to the previous SIN and they send uh, a SIN of their own. Um, now here's where the uh, things don't follow through. Um, in a properly uh, established uh, TCP connection, the initiating machine will send back a final acknowledgement to the send packet from the uh, receiving machine. But what if the initiating machine never sends back the final ACK to complete the connection? Well, what's going to happen is that the receiving machine is now just sitting there waiting for the final ACK to complete the uh, the connection. So if you do this enough, if you send enough of these uh, incomplete connection attempts, um, you can uh, basically overwhelm the machine or use up all of its resources, I guess would be a better way of putting it. Uh, because whoever wrote the the uh, the program code for the TCP IP stack made an arbit well made a decision about how many um, half open connections is what these are called how many half open connections uh, to um, to um, you know what's the, what's the maximum number of half open connections uh, that you could have at any one time so uh, if the attacker uh, reaches this number the receiving machine and it's usually a server of some type it just sits there waiting on the connections to time out uh, so it can you know uh, answer a new a new connection so it's not that hard for the attacker to send enough packets to keep the uh, the server uh, always in this state of being uh, of having as many of these half open connections at a time as it can handle. And I think I've got a graphic here of this. What's well, coming here in a moment. So, what I just told you is what I have on this slide. Uh, when the receiving machine stack was written, the programmer decided on a certain number of connections that could be waiting, uh, or a lot of times you'll see this referred to as half open. Um, when this number is reached, the machine can't accept 
uh, new connection. So it's effectively, it's not listening. It's uh, just sitting there. Now, where the denial of service comes in is uh, if I was a, a, a legitimate user trying to connect to the server, and you, as the attacker, had uh, uh, basically used up all the uh, the uh, um, half open connections, uh, the server wouldn't answer me, and I couldn't gain access to the resources on the server. Um, and if you're wondering how the attacker is going to do this, there's there's a lot of there's programs that have been written that actually do this for the attacker. Uh, so it's not like uh, the attacker has to put a lot of effort into this. So here's what happens with the a three-way handshake, just to uh, remind you here. Um, this machine is the uh, um, initiates the connection attempt and this is the one that receives um, to initiate the three-way handshake the uh, first machine is going to send a packet uh, to the receiving machine with the send flag set and what should happen here is the um, the also before we go on the I will point out that the initiating machine uh, selects a sequence number and in this case with the the example and I, and I borrowed this uh, graphic from version one of the book that we use for um, the IT 250 introduction to security class um, this was in chapter 3 I believe it was in the original in version 1 and it didn't make it into the second edition of the book uh, it was the best chapter in the book and it didn't make it into the second version so go figure uh, so I'm borrowing this um, so our send packet the um, the initiating machine is going to uh, to generate a uh, initial sequence number so this is actually an ISN and in our little graphic here uh, we're just using the number 1000 now the odds of that happening in the real world are pretty slim so coming back from the receiving computer here's what we have uh, we have an acknowledgement of the previous send so this acknowledges this and our sequence number is bumped up to 1001 which says this is the next uh, the number of the next byte data byte we expect to receive um, meanwhile the receiving computer uh, sends its own SYN or synchronized packet and uh, selects its own sequence number now there's a typo here um, the third leg of this, the third part of the handshake, uh, the initiating computer should send back uh, a sequence number of one oh or of one thousand one, uh, and so this is a typo. Um, it also acknowledges um, the sequence number plus one of the. Uh, receiving computer. This is telling the receiving computer this is the next data byte I expect to uh, receive from you. So this goes back to this. And it also sends this final acknowledgement that goes with this. So uh, you have a sin, a sin act, and a final act. Those are the the, the flags for your uh, setting up your three-way handshake. So this is what normally happens. This is normal operation. In a sin flood,
this final step never happens. This final step right here never happens. So that leaves this machine. Let's put this over here. Leaving the and I'll call this a server because it usually is. Leaving the server waiting. So that's what happens. Uh, normal operation you get all three of these steps and then um, once the three uh, parts of the handshake are set up then you go on with your ordinary uh, communications between the two machines. With a, uh, a send flood we're going to send a lot of packets and only have uh, um, that are only going to complete the first two of the three steps. Um, this final ACK packet here is never going to be sent. And we've got a graphic of this. So here's what happens here. Uh, here's the attacker that basically sends a, a large number of SIN packets. So this is the flood. Flood of packets. And this is the half open connection queue. Uh, again, this was written. This number was decided uh, when the uh, TCP IP program code was written. So there is a finite number here. So the attacker sends enough to basically keep this full all the time. This half open connections. Now the legitimate user over here, the customer, Basically, you can look at this as can't getting can't get a word in edgewise. There's uh, so many packets here that the half open connections uh, queue is uh, constantly being full. The server has no capacity to answer this legitimate user. So um, the you know, the legitimate user is effectively dosed. Uh, this is a denial of service. Um, situation. And again, the server is going to send back uh, a SYNAC reply for each of the SYN packets that it receives uh, from the attacker, but uh, it's not going to get a response. So this is a, uh, a classic SYN flood. Uh, these work. They still work today. Uh, you hear about them occasionally in the news. Uh, it's very simple. It uses the uh, basically the uh, the rules that are set forth in the protocol specifications against you, um, and actually, there's a limited number of things you can do, and we're going to look at those here in a moment. If I can just get the next slide. First, let's look at uh, some things the Black Hat must consider. Now, the Black Hat, I'm using this as um, a word, another word for attacker. Okay. Um, the receiving machine will send a sent act to the spoofed address. Um, and maybe we don't need spoofed in here right now. Let's put uh, parentheses here to the address of uh, the send packet. So to the how about the source address of the send packet. Now and here you'll see in a moment why I made that distinction. If this is a real machine um, it will reply with a reset which will clear the connection. This is not what a black hat wants. Um, and here's what I'm talking about. You, as an attacker, you don't want to 
uh, just launch this from your machine because, well, for one thing, you're basically telling everyone uh, who can track back your uh, your source IP number, you know, who you are. So typically what happens in the real world, the software that generates the attack will uh, basically make up an IP number uh, for the source address. So these reset packets will be sent back to that address and not your real address. Um, and we really, we as the attackers, we, we really don't need to see what's coming back. Um, we don't need to see the SENAC packet. We don't care about it. We're not going to answer it anyway. So the, the, the attack software spoofs or lies about the, the, the source address of the SEND packet. Now, but, but you still have the problem. If it's a real machine, um, you can imagine a machine sitting there and gets a packet back that says SENAC and it, it uh, checks in its IP, TCP IP stack and, and realizes it didn't really send that packet, has no clue why it got it back. In that case, that machine is going to reply with a reset back to the machine that we're attacking. So uh, that'll clear the connection. And this is not what we want. So the solution is to use either a private address or an unallocated address as the spoofed source IP address. And there's a, uh, there's a lot of private addresses. There's a lot of unallocated addresses out there that can be used as the spoofed source IP address. And you need to think about why, what, what I just said on this slide. And I'll review here. If you're the attacker and you're attacking me, you don't want to put the true IP address of your computer into that send packet that you send to me because I'll figure out, you know, I can figure out who's attacking me then. So this is not good. So what you want to do as the attacker, you want to basically, uh, you have a uh, some sort of a script, a little program on your computer that lies about the source IP address. So the packet gets to me because there's a, it contains my uh, IP address as its destination. Um, but we, you know, your computer just lied about the source. Now, when I respond, I'm going to send a packet back to that spoofed address. So the source of the original packet becomes the destination of my reply. And so I'm going to send back a packet. And the Internet will attempt to route it to that uh, IP number. And if it's a real IP number used by a real computer, that computer is going to get the packet and check in its memory and, and decide that it didn't send the packet, doesn't know anything about the packet, and... Therefore, we'll generate another packet and send it back to me that says, basically, I don't know what's going on. Just reset the connection. Well, that'll clear that connection out of the half-open queue and open up another, another slot for you know, a legitimate packet to come in. So as an attacker, you don't want this to happen. So you have your software pick out uh, IP numbers that are not going to reply. And these are private IP addresses or unall unallocated IP addresses and there are a lot of unallocated IP addresses. Um, I'll show you uh, a list later on that uh, will give you some kind of idea of how many unallocated IP addresses are out there. So you need to really think about what's going on here and why the attacker needs to spoof the, uh, the, the source address. What can the good guys do? Well, you can shorten the time. The receiving computer will wait before it basically gives up on a connection and clears it. Uh, you can also allow, by rewriting the stack, you can allow for a greater number of connection attempts. Now, from the standpoint of an attacker, uh, if you do both of these things, all I have to do is to simply send more packets. 
um, even if you throw if you clear out a half open connection sooner or if you allow more to come in it's really not that hard for me the attacker to send enough packets to still uh, successfully dosh you with a send flood so you can do these things probably should do these things but it's not going to be um, a 100 percent surefire cure for this now there is another solution if you have the proper kind of firewall um, that knows how to do this you can have your firewall send back the ACK packet um, to the receiving machine and also there's a picture of this graphic coming up this will allow the connection to be queued or to be moved out of the half open queue um, typically the full connection queue is uh, was written into code as being much larger than the the half open let me show you what this looks like and here we are this is the initiating computer so this is the attacker and this would be the server over here so here's our initial sin goes through the firewall uh, is received by the server server generates a sin act sends it back and who knows where this goes meanwhile after this the the firewall itself will immediately generate this final act packet so this uh, the connection uh, is moved to the established uh, queue I guess you call it now the uh, the firewall is going to sit here now and wait for a certain length of time and hopefully if it's a legitimate uh, connection the act will be uh, received by the firewall and you don't really need this we've already acknowledged it uh, if it's legitimate the firewall just sits there okay it's already acknowledged it so it doesn't have to do anything uh, it just waits on the, the next packet which is going to be a some sort of request uh, for information or whatever um, if the time specified uh, elapses and there's no ACK the firewall simply generates a, a reset that uh, clears the connection so this helps um, you could probably still be overwhelmed here um, there's some other things that you can do that I'll show you um, in um, one, a later video and hopefully I'll remember at the time to tie it back to to this uh, I'll tell you what it is right now um, what you should do is uh, you should filter at the firewall all packets uh, with the source IP um, that is either private or unallocated remember a while ago we were talking about the um, um, the attacker wants to make sure that uh, there's not a real live IP uh, computer with an IP that's going to see the uh, the um, SANAC packet and not know what to do with it so therefore send a reset packet that will basically clear the connection out and thwart the the effect of the flood so most of the time the attacker software will use either private IP addresses or uh, unallocated 
IP addresses. Well, if you've got your firewall set up to check the source address and basically throw all these away, um, you're going to uh, really help your situation as far as SIM floods. And it, it's not going to hurt a thing to throw them away because they can't be legitimate. If you think about this, if you've got a firewall and a packet shows up at your firewall from a private IP address, so it's coming in from the Internet with a private IP address, it's up to no good. Simply have your firewall drop the packet. Same thing for an unallocated uh, IP address. Uh, if it's unallocated, no company should be using it. So it, again, there is no legitimate traffic that should have the IP source address uh, in the in one of the unallocated ranges. So have your firewall just throw it away. It shouldn't pass it on through into your server. Just throw it away. Just drop the packet. And we'll talk a bit more about this. Uh, in, a, in another video.